Mike Arnaudis is from Athens, Greece. He knocked out 68 opponents in 110 amateur fights, turned pro in Ukraine, and then moved to Atlantic City, New Jersey to step up his career. Arnaudis caught our eye this past August when he battled aggressive, undefeated Juan Irango on Showbox. Arnaudis flashed plenty of speed and mobility. He took Urango's best shots and answered beautifully to rally down the stretch, win the crowd, and get a draw. He was back on Showbox October 22nd, and this time the Greek warrior unleashed hell on Jesse Feliciano, dropping him three times in the first and winning in two minutes, 49 seconds. Now, just eight weeks later, 25-year-old Mike Arnaudis returns to the ring and to our show. He's 11-0-2 with five knockouts. Steve, take us behind the numbers. Well, Nick, there's a stance advantage for Arna Udis. Mighty Mike is a quick lefty, and the only Southpaw Cayeto has faced to date is David yeah, Diaz, yeah. who's a plotter. Arna Udis' style will likely prove troublesome for Gallardo. Seeing is believing. The one thing missing from Arna Udis is power, right? Well, in his last start, he pulverized the usually durable Jesse Feliciano in one round. Has the last piece been added to the puzzle? And half a dozen. This will be Arno Udis' sixth fight this year. Conversely, Gallardo, who's been plagued by inactivity his entire career, has fought only once. Advantage, Mighty Mike. Joaquin Gallardo got the nickname Killer when he was five years old and started boxing. Gallardo had a solid amateur career. He was an Olympic alternate. Turned pro in 1997 when he was 20. He won his first six fights, took nearly a year and a half off, and has won 10 out of 13 since. He's aggressive and tireless in the ring, and while he doesn't seem to have home run power, he'll be looking to make it a slugfest with the Greek. Joaquin Gallardo, 16, 2 and 1, with five KOs. What do you see behind those numbers, Steve? Well, Nick, which is it with Gallardo? In one of his two losses against Ubaldo Hernandez, Gallardo boxed cautiously. In the other against David Diaz, he brawled for all eight rounds. Which is the true Gallardo? I think it's the brawler. Young veteran, Gallardo has fought 125 rounds to only 52 for Arna Udis. More significantly, he's been in with solid competition like 1996 U.S. Olympian Diaz, Hernandez, and Miguel Figueroa. Advantage, Gallardo. And singles, not homers. As his unimpressive KO percentage suggests, Gallardo is no puncher. His only chance for an upset tonight, it would seem, Nick, would be to outwork Arna Udis. So it's Mike Garnayudis looking to stay unbeaten on Showbox in what promises to be an action-packed fight when he takes on tough, determined Joaquin Gallardo in a junior welterweight bout scheduled for 10 rounds. Here's ring announcer Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the beautiful Chumash Casino Resort here in Santa Ynez, California, as we have a big night of action in store for you. It's Showbox, the new generation, and it's all brought to you courtesy of Gary Shaw Productions in association with the Santa Ynez Band of Chumash Indians and Showtime. Tonight's action is sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, the chairman, Chris Mears, Vice Chairman John Frierson, Executive Director is Dean Loheis. Introducing our three judges, scoring the bout from ringside, from east side of Los Angeles, Vince Delgado, from West Covina, California, Marty Denkin, and from Buena Park, California, Chuck Hassett. Our third man of the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, we have Raul Caiz. All right, fans, here we go with a junior welterweight special attraction scheduled 10 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. Entering the ring wearing black trunks with silver trim, he weighed in at 140 and one half pounds. His record stands at 16 wins, two losses and one draw with five wins coming by way of knockout from Oakland, California, introducing Joaquin Killer Gallardo. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner in this 10 round feature attraction, wearing white trunks with blue trim. He weighed in at 140 pounds even. His undefeated record stands at 11 wins, no losses, two draws, with five wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the NABO Junior Welterweight Champion, originally from Athens, Greece, now fighting out of Atlantic City, New Jersey, introducing mighty Mike Artoukis. 
Once again, the referee in charge, Raul Kais, now to give instructions. Okay, gentlemen, I give you instructions downstairs. Schedule. Remember, obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. Right here is good on both of you guys, okay? Shake hands, good luck to both of you. Not much difference in the numbers on the tail of the tape. What's truly amazing is that in 1996, Gallardo was a U.S. Olympic alternate at 106 pounds. One year later, he turned pro at 140, Nick. And a look at the rules. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight. You can be saved by the bell in the last round. Referee or doctor can stop the fight. So those are the big ones as we get ready to rumble here in our final show box of 2004. Mighty Mike Arnaiutis has exploded onto our scene. He is still unbeaten, trying to make it three for three on Showbox this year. He is in the Greek national colors of white and blue, facing Joaquin Gallardo in black. And Gallardo, a brawler, as we said, without a, not a lot of home run clout, Steve, but he said he's going to pick his spots to really make this a slugfest. And there he gets belted to the body. That's the best punch I've seen from Arne Udis in the three shows, that left left to the body. Well, we know what happened last time Arne Udis was on our air. I mean, we were commenting like this, and the fight was just about over. But right now, we have Arne Udis coming forward. Something tells me that as soon as Gallardo gets hit with a solid shot, we're going to see Gallardo revert to the brawler. Absolutely. He gets wild. And I think Arne Udis wants to make him wild. And there he just rocked him back with that straight. As Arne Udis gets full extension on that left hand, he goes, comes off blasting. He's cautious. There's an 18-foot ring, and he didn't like it. We saw him about three hours ago, and he was not upset about it, but sort of a plotter's ring and a puncher's ring, and he likes to move and turn and really cut those angles and make it difficult for anybody to find him. Well, it's, it's a spongy ring, and that's what makes it a puncher's ring, because obviously the flatter and faster the ring, the better for uh, for a mover. And also, it gets tired. He said, you know, this thing goes long. His legs are going to start getting tired, because you really have to absorb, and you, you have a lot of that springing. And it takes a lot out of your legs. Now, here comes Gallardo eating a punch in return. He looks very cautious, Steve, not sticking that jab. He said he would have that jab in Arno Udis' face all night, regardless if it's a southpaw. It doesn't matter. <laughs> are we going to get into that argument no, again? we haven't seen it, right? In theory, it sounds beautiful, doesn't it? <laughs> Arno Udis forcing the pace here. In every fight we've seen from Gallardo, Steve, there is really uh, very little backup stop. in him. Break. He nice and relaxed. Nice and relaxed. Okay, let's go box. Well, I'll tell you what. If they throw punches, power shots, at the same time, and Udis is going to land first. He throws the shorter, straighter punches, and Gallardo loops his shots much more. And Arna Udis, as you bring up the looping, he's, the only concern he has, and the chief concern early in this fight, is not to get caught with his chin in the air by one of those looping shots. Gallardo looks like a little bit tight, but still, it's a good pace for the first round. <laughs> Really not too much caution, but both guys fighting smart. Arnaiutis is in the white, and in the black is uh, Joaquin Gallardo. Who absorbs another left hand. Now Gallardo with a combination of his own, but Mighty Mike Arnaiutis fights back as the referee breaks him. Winding down round one, scheduled for ten here in Santa Ynez, California. Watch your heads, guys. Watch your heads now. Arnaiutis is the left-hander. Waiting, waiting, short with the jab, and now it's Gallardo running into the left hand once, twice, three times. And the Greek tees off down the stretch here at one. The and looking good is Mike Anaudis. Bill Johnson is trainer, let's listen in. Give me a word about Under your right hook to the body. And that left hand, the same way we did it back there in the pads, all right? But keep your chin down. Don't stand up in front of him and go out on the angle, okay? You probably should look up see that leg. Keep that jab popping. How you feel, all right? Action from round one. There really wasn't much action in the round until the very end. Arnotis landing that big straight left, as is the case so often against Southpaw. The right handed fighter just doesn't seem to see the left hand coming, and that's why it lands. Good point, Steve. Gallardo looked very cautious in that fight. He, uh, you know, the fights we are in the first round, the fights we've seen him and he gets wild right away. And as you talked about, loves the brawl. But so far, maybe it's not tightness. I think he has a lot of respect for Arnold. Although he told us he can't, Arnold just can't match him for experience, and he feels the Greek is really more or less an amateur at this point. Bad mistake, I think. Oh yeah, definitely. We've seen him fight enough. Arnold is in the white. 
from there. A nice jab got the attention of Gallardo, knocked him off balance. And here's the puzzle for Gallardo, Nick. In the first round, if that was something we can we could take from from the round, it was that Gallardo tried to box, and he really was ineffective. How many good shots did he land? Now he's coming forward, walking into punches. So what does he do? Stay on the outside, not hit land, or try to get close enough to land and Watch walk feet, into guys. shots. That's going to be the problem for him in this fight. Dilemma, but again, I think he's got to make it a brawl and get lucky and just keep firing. And that's what he does. Got to let his hands go, and there we see it there. Right hand followed by the left hook from Gallardo and Black, who's pressing forward. But see, Arnaud just moving around, using the entire ring feet, beautifully. Guys, watch your feet. Referee warning him not to get tangled up. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's all the time. Well, that's an inevitable. Okay, righty. Right. Lefty righty, you got to watch for the clash of heads, and you have to watch for the lead foot of each fighter stepping on each other, because if they both step forward, they're going to somebody stepping on somebody's foot. Arnaud is moving in both directions, moving to the right, ostensibly away from the power of the right hand of Gallardo. But oh, we like Gallardo's left hook better, don't we, Steve? Yeah, he, he went against a stationary target, Nick. He can really use that shot. Now he's fighting the southpaw, who moves. Hands are free, hands are free, gentlemen. Huh? Boy, and it looks like Anaitis may be cut. Around the nose, huh? Around the nose and also by the uh, left eye, inside the left eye. But he seems to redden up easily. He certainly did in the first fight last August against uh, Juan Arango and then battled back to get that exciting draw. Arne is picking his spots. He likes to go lead left to the body. He tried it there. And Gallardo getting a little bit of confidence up. He's got his hands up. There's those looping shots. Tries the uppercut from outside. It landed. Yeah. Total turnaround in this, strategically in this round. The first round was all uh, Arne Udis. Oh, Arne Udis seeing so well. He missed with a couple of shots. Fired that left. And now he has Gallardo definitely in a pitch battle here. He's got his respect, his attention, and maybe he rocked his world a little bit. Gallardo could take a shot, but he goes down with a crashing right. Four. Four. He's okay. up in a hurry, right. but he's hurt with a half Six. minute to go. Will he get Seven. out of this okay, round? Wow. All right. Keep your hands up. Let's That's the pause. third time in his career Joaquin Gallardo has been down. Let's see the follow up. The best shots on this is landing neck of the ones to the body. So impressive as Arnaudis rattles Gallardo, who is in trouble here with 15 seconds to go. Arnaudis, a little wild, sinking that left hook to the body, now trying to measure Gallardo. Uppercuts lands as he launches himself into Gallardo against the ropes. Gallardo trying to slug back. It looks like he's going to make it out of round two. But what an explosion, and suddenly it's a 10-8 round. Crisp, accurate punches from Arna Otis. This guy just did, does something different and impressive every time. Every time. Him. This time it was a right hook. Well, it was a lucky punch, lucky punch, all right? Lucky punch. Lucky punch. Keep watching. Nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. You need to lock this guy down. Killer, you tell punches, he backs up. Put your head back. I needed to do that. I know I'm sorry, but... Don't, don't. let you get hurt out there. You got to punch. You got to keep your hands okay, up. You, you got to punch. Exactly what I told you. You need to walk this guy down. Okay, you had him going. You the doctor was in to see Gallardo. This is why. It starts off, I thought maybe he stepped on his foot, but he did not. That Arnold has left, started the flurry. Arnold has got real brave and confident after that. And look at that, body shot. Believe me, that's why Gallardo's hands were down for the right hook to Florida because of the body shot that preceded it. Good point, Arnold is setting up his offense beautifully and showing us the kind of thunder we really didn't know he possessed just a few months ago. We had no idea. But he wiped out Jesse Feliciano, got a rock chin months ago on Showbox, and now he's back again, blazing another trail against Joaquin Gallardo, Watch your head, trying to Jim. drag Watch your himself back into this fight. They said he got to press forward and cut it off and go to war with this guy. It's that simple, Steve, but as you said, he can walk Stop. into those shots. Stop. Bad cut on the hairline of Gallardo. Cut by a headbutt, accidental. Okay, Mike, turn around. Accidental, let's go. It's on the right side, and it's streaming blood. Accidental headbutt, yeah. Here, third ball, Pais, the referee, make it clear it was accidental. Oh, ripping combinations from Mike Arnaudis. 
Get him up, get him up, Mike. Two quick points. One, one Nick, is that I know this is accuracy is fantastic. And two is Gallardo, as predicted, as soon as he got hurt, as soon as he got hit, he turned into a slugger. Look at him walking in now, forgetting all about the boxing and the jab and the counter punch and just looking around that big left He's wild and he's got to get lucky, Steve. I don't think he could last 10 rounds at this pace and getting put as many times as he had there. He cracks with a nice left hook to the body. So Arne Unis, Arne Unis backing off a little bit, but he's flicking that jab in the face of the on-rushing Gallardo, looking for an opening, but he's leading with his face there, and now blood streaming all over as it's flowing from that accidental headbutt above the right temple. Arne Unis knows he's in a war, go, blood go, on his trunks. Well, Gallardo's landed his best shots after that bleeding began, but I think he's just desperate now. Steve, he's a guy who's not afraid to take a shot. Let me see some butt. He'll go to war anytime. Hard to tell now with as much another, blood as there. Another cut, accidental headbutt. Let's go, box. All right, different cut Keep now. your head. There's blood Watch all over Arno. Watch your head. Forehead. It's hard to tell if it's his or it's Gallardo. It is. Will it make Arnaudus a little bit cautious? Feel your own blood? Will it pump up your adrenaline? Arnaudus had his man down, Gallardo in the second. Gallardo shaking it off to some degree as he pulls his way forward, runs into uppercuts there. Arnaudus fighting, backing up a lot in this round, and backing off the pedal a little bit. Trying to put the combinations in there, that left. If you keep that's punching, you got him on the hook and try that's there, Steve. Yeah, relax. You got a bad cut. You got, got two bad cuts. I know you got two bad cuts. You got two bad right. cuts. Forget about it. Come on. Let's walk you over. You got two bad cuts. Come on. Raul Caillou stops it saying he got two bad cuts. And Gallardo doesn't like it at all. Well, he certainly seems fit. And if the referee stopped the fight because of the cuts and not the knockdown, well, then you know what? It should have been a technical draw. Good point. It's over at two minutes and 40 seconds. Round three. Well, you know, that, that's a good, good shot here as we see Arna Yudas looking at Gallardo, who didn't want to stop the tail. The headbutt, the headbutt. It's a fight, okay? Blood's under control, yeah, Steve. I know you got Get your clean up. Yeah. Gallardo really yeah. didn't want to hear about it from Arno Hudis, did he? Did it delay the inevitable? Did it, delay the did it uh, <laughs> just short circuit the inevitable? Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. No, no, no problem. Three, four times. Yeah. Well, you know, the bottom line, Nick, Arno Hudis did score two knockdowns. We're going to look at action from round three here. There's a butt. Yeah, you can see the eye of Arno Otis. Yeah, it was inevitable. And here's another one right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys, it's fortunate for Arno Otis that with all the blood, the fight wasn't stopped immediately because of the cuts. If the, it had been stopped, hey, then uh, it's a technical draw. But instead, Arno Otis, straight left hand, oh, probably not as big a shot as the right hook to floored him in the first round. But nonetheless, referee immediately calls it off. Great and I can understand why Gallardo's upset because I don't think the referee really made a determination of how hurt Gallardo was from the second knockdown. It's as if the cuts contributed to the stoppage as much as the knockdown. Okay, he's ruled it over immediately. See, if you keep throwing shots, straight you got him on the third drive. Yeah, you're right, straight shots, and that's why you want to throw in combination. That's, hey, cut it as you will. That's another impressive did, did win for Arno Udis. Absolutely. That's Jeff Lacey there with him. Jimmy Lennon Jr. will make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes, 40 seconds in round number two. A referee in charge, Raul Kai, stops the contest. The winner by way of knockout and still undefeated, mighty Mike Arno the crowd didn't like it, Steve. Was it a premature stoppage or what? The blood is under control as we see Joaquin Gallardo walking off. He's not bleeding anymore. So the cut, the, the blood was stopped, Steve, and not to be overly critical, but to ask a blunt question again. To me, it looked like they could have fought on. No, I, I think, again, to reiterate it, I think if the referee, if Kai stopped the fight because of the cuts, 
that wasn't a good call. If he stopped it because he thought the fighter was getting hit too much, then, you know, then obviously he's doing the best to protect the fighter. Did you think he was being hit too much? He was getting hit, and he was going to probably get knocked out. Right. But you can't talk about probably. You have to go and make a judgment based on what you see up to that point. Mike Arnaiutis moves to three for three on Showbox this year. Coming up next, main event, 12-round lightweight showdown between Ebo Elder and Courtney Burton. As our final show of the year comes to a climax tonight in Santa Ynez, California. You know, when I reflect on this, you're a lot of boxers who came our way made an impression. If you're a fan of Showbox, it's probably because you like our theme. It's about boxers with hunger. Fighters have to be tremendously motivated, especially at this stage, because there's no cheerleaders, no entourages, and no multi-year contracts. I've been thinking about these guys a lot throughout the year. Remember Armando Velarde's married two kids, former Marine? went to school on the GI Bill and got a master's degree in criminal justice. He came from California to St. Paul, Minnesota, with only his father, who's also his trainer. Velardez was the underdog, an opponent for the unbeaten local hero. It was apparent, though, from talking with him that he was driven. Then we watched those qualities, plus his unforeseen talent, play out in the ring when Armando Velardez knocked out the local hero in eight. And who could possibly forget Paulie Malinaji, the motor mouth junior welterweight from Brooklyn? He came to the lunar-like setting of Laughlin, Nevada and brought his attitude with him. But beyond the smoke and mirrors and golden highlights in his hair, we got to the real heart of Paulie Malinaji. He injured his right hand so badly it was useless from the opening rounds, but he fought through the pain and punished his aggressive opponent for 10 rounds. His blood-soaked hand told the story of what Paulie Malinaji is made of. Finally, there's welterweight David Estrada. Outclassed by Ishe Smith on Showbox in 2003, Estrada went back to the gym and got back on Showbox this year. He came to the same place, angry at maybe himself for failing the last time, and annoyed with us for maybe taking him lightly. When the bell rang, though, David Estrada transformed that jagged edge into the best performance of his career when he completely dominated unbeaten former Olympian Nurhan Suleiman. Now Estrada will fight unbeaten Chris Smith on our first show box of the new year. And sure, we saw guys with talent dominate fights, but we also saw fighters deal with adversity or not. And the ones who succeeded showed us all again how badly they want to be somebody. It's really what I love about this series. And I was blessed, privileged to be ringside for every moment to see it with my broadcast partner, Steve Farhood. Thank you, Nick. And, and what I love about Showbox and what I've loved from day one, the prospects we feature, for the most part, are matched tougher than they've ever been matched before. That was certainly the case this year in 2004. Hey, sure, some of them didn't make it, didn't pass the test. Others really shined and showed why prospects eventually turn into contenders. I think of Robert Guerrero, a featherweight from California who jumped way up in class by taking on former world champion Enrique Sanchez. Guerrero was so sharp, so commanding, that I now consider him the best young featherweight in the game. And there was Troy Rowland, a feather-fisted middleweight who not only took on crushing puncher Epifanio Mendoza, but stood flat-footed and traded with the Colombian veteran picking himself up from the floor to score the most satisfying win of his young career. And finally, how about Greek Southpaw Mike Arnaudis, who until appearing on Showbox was an obscure six-round prelim fighter on the Maryland club show circuit. In drawing with fellow unbeaten Juan Orango, Arnaudis brawled and boxed for 12 thrilling rounds. And in crushing Jesse Feliciano, he displayed the muscle to match his superb boxing skills. Be sure that the tough matchmaking on Showbox will continue. You just saw it with the fighter we featured in the feature there, Arnaudis, matched tough against Gallardo. Look what he did, another fantastic win for Mighty Mike. Nick, what I look forward to the most about 2005, we're gonna see some fresh fighters <laughs> that we don't know yet, 
emerge and become stars on Showbox, maybe even contend by the end of the year. One thing I've learned over three years on this show, take nothing for granted, right? Rising stars in the making. Well, now that we look back, it is time to look ahead. Let's take you to our first show of the new season. It starts Friday night, January 21st from Mohegan Sun Casino in Connecticut. Unbeaten Chris Smith clashes with tough David Estrada in the 12-round main event. And opening the show, Saku Powell puts his perfect record on the line against once-beaten Aslan Bek Action begins at 11.30.